name of the one holy and living God. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Ah, well, good morning, St. Paul's. <laughs> It is so good to be with you this morning, and I have to tell you that this sermon comes with a caveat. The expectation is that you are going to talk back. Okay. <laughs> so this is not a monologue this morning. This is the expectation that you will actually answer, and these are not rhetorical questions. <laughs> so I'm going to begin by asking you a question. What are some of the things that you worry about? What are those things? Money. Money. What are the things that keep you up at 2 o'clock in the morning with your mind racing? I heard money. What else? Health. Health. Time. Time. Work. Children. Children. Oh, that's a big one. Pain. Violence. 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 Well, we'll pray for you. <laughs> we'll keep praying for you. Pain. Pain. You see, I am convinced that there's a lot of things that we worry about, isn't there? And the thing is, if you don't have enough to worry about, turn on the TV. Watch the news. If you want more things to worry about, go see what's going on in the world. We hear of wars and violence, or just, you know, go on social media. If you want something else to worry about, go there. But the thing is, there is a lot in our world for us to worry about, aren't, isn't there? We worry about our kids. We worry about our grandkids. We worry about the future of our nation. We see division and disunity. We see all the violence and all the stuff that's happening. And I often quote Mark Twain, stop the world, I want to get off of it. I wish they would stop calling the news the news. Just start calling it the bad news. A little bit of truth in advertising. <laughs> but the thing is, the temptation when we are worried is to do what? When you get worried about stuff, what do you do? Turn off, eat. Turn off, eat. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there this morning. <laughs> what else? When you're worried about stuff, what do you do? Cancel, pray. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> Cry. Cry. You see, I clean. If I'm worried or upset, I clean. I clean anything and everything, including the dog. <laughs> and no, I don't make house calls. <laughs> but the thing is, we all find ways of having to deal with the things that we worry about, right? And the thing is, as the church, sometimes we can get so worried about stuff that we end up a lot like the disciples in our gospel for this morning. You see, our... our Disciples this morning, let me paint a picture. The disciples had just spent time with Jesus, right? They had seen him raise the dead, give the, give the blind their sight, cured the folks who could not hear. He was healing. He was a one-man HMO, holiness maintenance organization. <laughs> he was a traveling free clinic, <laughs> And the thing is, he did all of this stuff, and people were ooing and aahing, and the disciples had been with him, and they saw the potential and the promise, and they said, oh, he is the one. He's going to transform our world. He's going to make things all right. We are so on board with the Jesus train. And then he had to go do something stupid like get killed. <laughs> Here is all of this potential, and then Jesus gets killed by law and order by the state. And what had happened to the disciples? They are all worried. Oh my God, if they can do that to Jesus, what's going to happen to us? And so when you're worried, you go back to the things that are familiar, right? So they did the thing that's familiar. They gathered back together. A couple of weeks ago, we heard about them walking the way to Emmaus that road from Jerusalem on the way to the city of Emmaus, and that was them talking, and Jesus shows up with them and starts telling them about all the stuff that had supposed to happen, and they could not believe it. And I love that that ends with, were not our hearts strangely stirred when we were walking with them? 
And then Jesus shows up to them behind the closed doors, and Thomas wasn't around. I love Thomas. I think Thomas gets a bum rap. No, Jesus shows up behind the closed doors and says to the disciples, look, hear the nail, hear the nail print. I am really here. And Thomas, Thomas is the show me, he's the show me the money guy. He says, until I can see it and put my hands in it, I am not believing a thing. So Jesus comes back and he says to Thomas, okay, you want proof? There it is. But the disciples are still afraid. And so today we find ourselves the evening of the, of the, of the resurrection and they're behind. Did anybody notice where they were? They were in the room where they had had the last supper where Jesus had taken off his robes and grabbed the basin and washed their feet and said to them, a servant, a, a, mas a servant is not above its master. What I do to you, go do to others. He had said to them in that same room, go love one another as I have loved you. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. He had said to them at that same room, here's some bread and some wine, Take this bread and break it and share it and in it remember me. And he said, the wine, take this and drink it and remember. This is the same room that they had been familiar with Jesus. They went back to where they had been. You know, they went back home. But the thing is, unlike the last time, Jesus wasn't there. And they were afraid. And when you're afraid, you don't make the best decisions. So what did they do? They locked the door like that was going to help. They were gathered behind locked doors for fear of the authorities. Can you imagine that conversation? Well, we need to eat, so who's going to go out to go get food? I suspect that holy door dash was not going to happen. <laughs> Somebody has to bring us food. And they're arguing back and forth. Well, was Jesus really alive? Is he back? Is he not? What's going on? Like, I would love to have been a fly on the wall in that room. And then suddenly, Jesus shows up in the room. And did you see what were the first words Jesus said to them? Say it a little bit louder. Peace, peace be with you. Now, we translate that word as peace. But see, that word actually means wholeness be with you. You see where this is going? He doesn't just say to them, oh, peace, I hope you feel good. He's saying to them, all of you is loved. All of you is needed. All of you will be made whole. So peace be still. And have you ever noticed that whenever God is about to do something new, God starts off by saying some variation of do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Peace be with you. Don't worry. Over and over and over throughout the Gospels and in our Scripture, God begins something new by saying, don't be afraid. And what happens? We are afraid. <laughs> Every time God says to God's people, don't be afraid, the first response is, ah! <laughs> They're afraid. But here's the thing. Jesus says, I will give you my Holy Spirit. I will breathe a part of my very self on you and you. Kind of like Oprah. You get the Holy Spirit, and you get the Holy Spirit, and you get the Holy Spirit. What Jesus says to us is that I will not leave you, and I love the old King James Version, I will not leave you comfortless. There's something reassuring and beautiful and knowing that we do not get to be, that we get to be comforted by God's Holy Spirit. But notice what happens. Jesus shows up. He says to them, do not be afraid. Peace be with you. He breathes the Holy Spirit onto them. And did they stay behind the locked doors? They did not. They go out into the town. 
They go out among the people. They go out and the people into the people and start telling the good news in every language and tongue. You see, the church is a lot like that. We can hide behind some locked doors sometimes. We can choose sometimes to kind of go like, it is beautiful in here. We can just stay here. It feels nice. We can just hang out here. But you see, at the end of this liturgy, Deacon Barbie is going to tell you to get your butt out of here and go out and do something. Not in those words, but you get the point. <laughs> She's going to say some variation of go in peace or go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Get out. You don't have to, you can't go, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And that's what Jesus said to the disciples. Go out into the world. Go and tell the good news. Go and share the good news. Go and discover what hope looks like and be the hope of the world. Now I question to you, my sisters and brothers, my siblings in Christ here at St. Paul's, is where is the Holy Spirit kicking you? And notice I use the word kicking because that Holy Spirit, you know, we get this... um, I think, mixed up picture of the Holy Spirit. You know, we expect doves and, ah. No. The Holy Spirit's more like, get out there. (laughs) I know you don't want, like, when you have to put the dog out in a very really cold morning. (laughs) It's kind of like, your bathroom is out there, go. (laughs) The same thing, the Holy Spirit doesn't invite us. The Holy Spirit literally kicks us out into the world and says, go and share the good news. And that's what Pentecost is about. We celebrate Pentecost, not because of what it meant back then, but what it means for us today. It means that we are called to be God's good news. We are called to be hope. We are called to be radical hope in a world that is struggling with hopelessness. We are called to be joy in a place that is desperately in need of joy. We are called to be good news when all the news is bad. That, my sisters and brothers, my siblings in Christ, that is our calling. And if we are not about our calling of sharing this good news, we are wasting our time. If we cannot, with the power of the Holy Spirit, recognize that we are loved and be loved by a God who called this world into being, that called the cosmos into being, that has given God's very self to each and every single one of us, then we are wasting our time and we are hiding our light under a bushel basket. Because this world needs you. This community of Crondelette needs you to be that empowering light in this world. Because I can guarantee you, around this place, there is lots of fear. Around this place is a lot of hopelessness. Around this place is a lot of despair. And you are needed today more than ever before. The Holy Spirit is calling you not to stay behind locked doors and sing hymns and say prayers and feel good about ourselves. That is great, but if it's not empowering us to go out and say we are going to bring good news to this community, then we do all of this in vain. Because the Spirit needs you to work. Communi- this community of Crondelette needs you to be good news, to share good news, and to live good news. And for us to do that, we have to catch on fire. I love that the Holy Spirit comes in the guise of fire. You know, because fire burns away the things that don't need, that aren't needed, and sends us out pure and refined. You know, I love Isaiah, the God is a refining fire until you are the one being refined. <laughs> Because the thing is, we Episcopalians, we talk a lot about wanting to change until I have to actually make the change. But what we are called to do in this time, my sisters and brothers, is to catch on fire with that good news so much so that folks are drawn to us, not just because we have some good entertainment value, but because we are sharing the good news that we just cannot contain. Because our world, this community, needs you to catch on fire. 
Back in 1757, an author named William Blake wrote some words about Pentecost. He had been despairing about the fact that the church was not doing well and the community was dealing with lawlessness. And I love those words from from the 1700s. The heathen (laughs) were on the rise. I, I got to figure somehow of getting that into a letter sometime. You know, you heathen. No, no, never mind. <laughs> but William Blake wrote these words. <laughs> Unless the eye catch fire, God will not be seen. Unless the ear catch fire, God will not be heard. Unless the tongue catch fire, God will not be named. Unless the heart catch fire, God will not be loved. Until, unless the mind catch fire, God will not be known. Unless we catch fire, God will not be known. My sisters and brothers, my siblings in Christ, I need you to catch on fire. We need this church of ours, all of our churches, to catch on fire. We need to stop living behind closed doors and go out into the world and proclaim the good news that we have found, to proclaim the joy that we have discovered, to be ambassadors of the hope that we have known because that world needs our hope, our joy, and above all, our love. And that love comes to us in Christ Jesus, activated by the Holy Spirit. When we gather at that font, each and every single one of us is empowered by the Holy Spirit to be and share good news. So my sisters and brothers, my siblings in Christ, my challenge to you this morning is to catch on fire. Catch on fire with the love of a God who has called you and claimed you and named you. Catch on fire with the God who has said to you, you are my good news in the world. Catch on fire with the God who has said to me, said to you and to me that you are the only good news that some people will ever read. You are the only Bible that some folks will ever encounter. So my sisters and brothers, my siblings, we need to be on fire with love for this God who has called us and claimed us and named us and then sent us out into the world to be good news. Because our world needs good news. That together we can say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me. Use me. Send me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Amen. Let us gather at the font to renew the promises of our baptism and to welcome new members into the community of faith.
Friends in Christ, we gather at the font, the source of our beginning, the place where we are given all of the gifts by the Holy Spirit to be empowered for the work to which we are called. And so the candidates for reception will now be presented. Bishop, I present to you Belinda Birdsong, John Birdsong, and Brandy Weeks to be received into the church. Is it your desire to be received into this community? Yes. Okay. Do you pro uh, let's see, where do I begin? There we go. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Congregation, will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Then let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. On page 304 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. Yep. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, a Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to the dead. dead. On, On the, the third, third day, day he rose again. He, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news, the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Then let us now pray for these candidates who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and who are to renew their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers and praises, almighty God, that we in all of our doings may continue always to be yours through Christ our Savior. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Come on over. To be received into this communion. Reception. How were you named before God? Randy Wicks. Brandy, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, keep, and preserve you always. Amen. Amen. How are you named before God? I'm John. John, we recognize you as a member of the one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. How are you named before God? Belinda. Belinda, we recognize you as a member of the one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, let your divine hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newest members of our community. <laughs> My sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Please do 